Hey gang, Scott with the Scott Gartner Group here. And this video is kind of a rough attempt to uh, do a follow-up video to an article that uh, I wrote last, uh, well, for the January 1st edition of uh, this month's Scottsdale North newspaper. Um, it was about what your home is worth and how to price a home in a, a dynamic market like this one. And this is really a dynamic market. This is an extreme market. And so it seemed like it might be helpful to do that, to give you a sense. I won't cover, be able to cover everything here, but I should be able to give you a good feel for it and hopefully be helpful. If not, give me a call and I'll go over it. But uh, for now, a um, couple of two premises for this video that I'd like you to consider. Well, first one is that th this is all based on the premise that you pre-market the home. Uh, if you're looking for top dollar on your home, you absolutely have to ensure that the market knows about your home well in advance of the time you'll be taking offers. The more buyers that know about the home, you're more, the more money you can make. You know, they can't bet on what they don't know. <laughs> the better your pre-marketing will be, the more money you can make. And the other one is about appraisals. That, um, this presupposes that there won't be any appraisals, that your offers won't be subject to appraisal. Nothing's going to appraise in this market. It's just um, prices are moving too fast. Your, your agent should be able to get you past this. If you're doing your home yourself, uh, give me a call. I'll help you. 480-634-5000. But, um, so to just give you a little context why we're talking about this you know the the demand issue is pretty big this year we've got a good bit of demand but it's really about the supply there's no supply we've had a chronic supply problem for a number of years now and it's continuing i know a lot of people feel like the market's you know, it's finally peaking and it's going to go back into a normal market it's not um the first line of this is from the cromford report if you're not familiar with Cromford, they are the authority in the Valley on um, all things real estate statistics. January 1st, 2022 starts with lower supply than January 1st, 2021. And you saw what happened to values this year. But to give you an even better sense of that, <clears throat> this is the active listings in Scottsdale since 2001. The lowest mark we ever had. The lowest number of active listings was April of 2005. 962 listings in the entire state of Scottsdale. What happened with that? Well, over the next four or five months, home values went up 40 to 50 percent, and not just in Scottsdale, but the whole valley. That was the effect of having that low of inventory. Well, the inventory this morning, 548 homes on the market almost half as few as there was then. So really this is not going away. This is a problem that's gonna take a while to get around. So this pricing issue is gonna be here. That's why we're doing this. So <clears throat> if you wanna try and do this yourself, most common way people are doing that is with the uh, automated valuation model, uh, AVMs we call them. Zillow is by far the most uh, popular. Uh, Realtor.com has one, Redfin, Trulia, we have our own Scottsdale North Home Values, which does a pretty good job, but really these are uh, very, very limited. They, they, um, first off, the, the tax assessor data is wrong so often, you can't believe it. Many, many homes in North Scottsdale that have a guest house doesn't show up on the, on the tax record. Square footage is wrong, number of bedrooms is wrong. So these things don't have much of a chance because the data is bad. But these are values based on computer algorithms. Uh, if you put your own house in, in each of these, you'll see that there'll be a big discrepancy between the numbers that you get. Really, the only way to accurately estimate the value of your property is to do a thorough market analysis with all the comparable sales. So which sales? So, Close sales within the last 90 days. Now, typically, people, appraisers will tell you, you got to use six months comparable sales. Not anymore. 
they are way too old. To be honest with you, 90 days is way too old, but you got to go with what you got. But also along with this, factor in the pending sales, particularly if they were only on the market for a day or two days or five days. You can be sure that they're pretty close to the list price. Some, many of them be over the list price. But that's the way to do it. Use the past 90 days and the pending sales. That's going to give you your most accurate information. Try and keep square footage of the homes you're comparing to within 20% of the size of your home. So if you've got 2,000 square foot home, you know, go from 1,600 to 2,400 feet. Honestly, I think I'd cut it closer to 15%. If there's enough comparable sales, that would help you to get it there. But you also want to do it within, you know, pretty close proximity to your home. Within a mile of your home, it's best in the same community. If you're in Terra Vida, try and use Terra Vida comps. If you're in Winfield, use Winfield comps, Bellicera, like that. Try and do that if you can. And then uh, same number of bedrooms and bathrooms. Um, Scottsdale North is a little different in that Bedrooms isn't as significant as it is in many places. You know, a lot of places around around the country, they'll tell you you got to have three bedrooms to resell, not in Scottsdale North. A lot of second homes, two bedrooms are fine, but the bathrooms can make a difference because they're expensive. Many people want to have at least a half bath for their guests, so the bathrooms can factor in. Try and keep it to the same number of bedrooms and baths. And then updating. This has become huge. Um, the, uh, I blame it on HGTV. Um, people really want it to look like it does and you see in all the HGTV things. So when you compare it, if your home is largely original from 25 years ago and there's a house that you're comparing it to that's a complete remodel, you got to factor that in. Also, most of the homes are over 20 years old up there. If they've got a new a new roof or a new HVAC system, that's important. We get it on every contract these days. They wanna know have they been replaced yet, those type of things. So you gotta factor in that updating and then location. Location is the largest determinant of value up in Scottsdale North most of the time. It is not as big of a factor right now, or at least it's not as big of a negative factor. Um, this is the hardest part of the price. Here I put in um, kind of a row house community to give you a sense of it. Uh, my, my mantra in Scottsdale North has always been, look, I don't care about the inside. I can fix that. I can't fix the location. What's it back up to? What's it near? That type of a thing. And this gives you a little bit of a sense of it. Um, so you really have to factor these kind of things in. Um, some tips on that. So, let the market guide you. The, I mentioned in the article, we had just recently seen a couple of sales sold much higher than we expected them to. So I thought this market's moving up faster. We bumped all of our listing in price and it worked out in all of them. Uh, unique traits. Look for unique traits that your home has, uh, some other homes don't have. I mentioned in the, in the article that three-car garage. There hadn't been three-car garages selling for quite a while. Just for one reason or another, they hadn't come up. So it created this pent-up demand. That's important. Uh, if, again, this goes back to location, golf lot, golf cart with a mountain view is huge. NAOS, that's natural area, open space surrounding your house, your, your lot, or your at least your backyard. Uh, you know, the size, many people feel like, well, mine's bigger than most lots. Up in Scottsdale North, that's not necessarily a positive. You know, these, a lot of these people at second homes, they'll say, hey, I'm not coming out here to work on my yard. So sometimes that's a plus, sometimes it isn't. If they wanted to add a casita or something, maybe it is a plus. So it's hard to factor that in. Close to the amenities can be a biggie too. People like being near the clubhouses, not too close but near it, you know, that kind of a thing. Again, pent up demand, pay attention to if your community has not had homes for quite a while or hasn't had very many listings or very many good listings for a while, there can be a big pent up demand. So kind of watch that and price it accordingly. If there hasn't been a sale for a while, 
or an available home for a while, bump the price up a little. Seasonality, this is important that seasonality isn't as important now as it usually is. You know, um, standard practice in Scottsdale North for us, anything that didn't sell in the, the winter and spring, we would take off the market June 30th and then wait and sell it in October when the snowbirds came back, that kind of a thing. You know, I, my, uh, what I've often tell our sellers is that July and August is where the desperate sellers and the bargain hunters come to meet. Are you desperate? <laughs> no, we're not desperate. Let's not be there. <laughs> so we'd wait for October. Um, also, I'd hear, I would mention, it can, be, it can be, you can use it to your favor. So we had a couple of, I think three or four listings this summer that wanted to sell in May and June. I told them the same story about seasonality, but my thought was we probably had enough, pen, we might've had enough pent up demand to get it sold anyway. So in each case we said, look, let's try this. Let's put it on the market for a few weeks, see what happens. If it doesn't sell in a few weeks, the pent up demand isn't there we'll wait and sell in October. I think three of them did sell, one did not. And this, this could be a good story for you to know. So we put it on, we put it on the home on at a million 325 in July. We left it on for three weeks in July, you know, 115 degrees and humid, not the best time. So we got one offer, um, I think it was a million 225 maybe a million 250 and did some counter offers, but it just wasn't working out. So we said, look, let's just wait. We put it back on uh, actually in November, I think November 9th, uh, we sold it with multiple offers for a million five. So that's a big difference, $175,000 by waiting a few months. So part of that was the market had moved up. More of that is we had a lot more people looking at that time for that particular type home. So seasonality isn't all important, but it's something to think about. Um, the psychological thing about 99.99, meaning pricing your home, if it's 500,000, price it at 499.99. I don't think that's a great idea. Sometimes it is, you know, it's a bit of a psychological thing. Sounds like it's less. But the way people search is in twenty-five and fifty thousand dollar increments. So some of the buyers are going to search from five hundred to seven hundred. They'll never see your home. I don't think that's you know it's worth it for that. That's my personal opinion. But for what it's worth, I've been doing this a long time. And then the old adage: you can't underprice in a heated market. It's true. Honestly, this market is so hot. I really think. We could put a listing in the MLS for a dollar and it would get bid up to where it was supposed to. But that's predicated on the fact that the market gets to see it, that the right people get a chance to vote. And that speaks again to that pre-marketing thing that I was talking about. Um, if the market doesn't get to see your home, you're not gonna get the full value. So that's pretty much what I had to say about that. I hope it's helpful. Again, if, if I can be of any help, 480-634-5000. Give me a call. Thanks for listening. Make it a great day. Let's have a great year. Uh, where are we? That's good.